morning. I'm really rather surprised that you can serve so little time in this state for all the things that have happened to me and escape. I um, wanted to thank you for your time for the ability to read a statement. Um, I am the victim of the attempted murder and assault on my life by Ali Jonas, Mr. Jonas's son. Mr. Jonas and his wife facilitated the escape of his son, my assailant, to Jordan in order for Mr. Jonas's son to avoid prosecution and jail time. I know their son is guilty because I can identify his son and I could identify him because I saw him before he started to strangle me. Mr. Jonas knowingly and with great forethought attempted to obfuscate justice. He had no regard for the law. By his request of early parole, it is not clear if he continues to have no regard for the law. However, I presume that he does not. Early parole supports this disregard for his sentence and the law and the time he has been asked to serve. What is What it is clear to me is that Mr. Jonas was a support network for his son, a fugitive from justice. I would surmise that he will continue to support his son, which I presume would be much easier for him to do so outside of prison. Mr. Jonas's actions clearly indicate that he feels that his son should not answer for his crime, and he has gone to great lengths so this would happen. Mr. Jonas presents a danger to society. Er, Ali Jonas presents a danger to society, and Mr. Jonas failed to acknowledge this by his actions. Again, I would surmise that his support of his son, a fugitive, has not and will not change for him. Mr. Jonas himself has shown his willingness to flee and avoid the consequences for his actions as well. The fact that he was about to board a plane for Jordan to himself flee, and, and in addition, he refused extradition from Nebraska to Iowa to his own detriment, indicates to me that he operates by his own rules and he is willing to suffer the consequences and should continue to do so by serving the rest of his sentence. Operating by his own rules has harmed other people, myself, my family, my friends, the university community, the Iowa City community, the state of Iowa, and his own daughter. I believe he is a danger to the community because of his inability to be truthful in all of his transactions that he went through to commit this crime. Mr. Jonas has demonstrated that he knowingly and willingly is capable of breaking the law and will, I believe, will continue to do so. My assault and the fleeing of Mr. Jonas's son have had a tremendous effect on me. However, because the state's case is still open, I will decline to share this information as it is important the state's case remains strong. The things that I can share that bother me greatly are one, I cannot thank the two women who came to my aid as well as any of the emergency personnel and hospital personnel, because it is once again, important that all testimony remains untainted should Ali Yunus return to this country for trial, either voluntarily or by extradition. I am forever grateful and indebted to all of these people for my care. Two, the long-term effects of strangulation and the lack of oxygen to the brain have the potential to have catastrophic effects on my cognitive functions as I age. This is an unknown that I must live with and worries me tremendously and is of great concern to my family as well. I believe the complicit nature of Mr. Jonas's actions in order to facilitate his son's fleeing and his inability to take responsibility for his actions indicate that he will continue to disregard the law or the terms of parole set by the board. Mr. Jonas is a danger and should continue to serve out his full sentence. I ask that the parole board deny Mr. Jonas's request for early release from his prison term. Um, again, I think that um, he has shown disregard for rules, not just in my case, but throughout his lifetime. I don't see that changing. I think extra time or the full serves, time served I would hope would at least make an impression that maybe the rules do apply to him and his family. Thank you for your statement. I really appreciate that. I think now at this time that uh, there's nothing else that you would like to say, we'll put you back down to panelists. Perfect, thank you, bye-bye. Thank you. Heather, do you have that? Thank you. Okay, Kyle, if you'd like to bring the offender in at this time, we can.
Hello, please state your full name and your state number. Alif Ali Muhammad Yunus 6881067. Thank you, Mr. Yunus. Um, I'd like to kind of explain to you the process of this hearing or this interview, please. Um, so first of all, I'd like to inform you that this is a public forum that uh, people in the public can listen to us right now. Uh, people in the media can listen as well, but no, they cannot participate. With that being said, we may discuss confidential information such as your mental health history, medical information, or your treatment history, if there's any. Um, do you understand this and are you willing to proceed with this interview? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, also, um, at the beginning, when we get started here, I'm gonna ask you to describe your crime in detail, what happened on that day that brought you to prison. After that, myself and my colleagues um, would like to have a few questions to answer. Um, and please be detailed in your answers as well as we ask these questions. When we're all done answering these questions, we're going to deliberation, meaning we're going to talk about what's happened, what's going to happen, what our decision will be. Um, when we go into deliberation, you'll be able to listen and hear, but not participate. And I'll come back to you with our answer and explain what it, what it all means. Okay. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce my colleagues, Susie Wynott and Meredith Lamberti, just so you know, they're on the other screens. So at this time, I would like you to tell me, please, uh, what was going on that day of the incident, the crime, what was going on in your life, and explain to me the crime. Yes, uh, uh, the crime happened because I have a, a kid who used to be in a medical school, University of Iowa, his name is Ali. Units. We bring that kid back home, and uh, what happened there that he said I didn't do anything. Bring him back home, he said with us 11 months, then DNA came back, and he said that, okay, that the DNA came back from the lab and said there is no DNA match on him and her. So he said, I'm doing, won't do it. As a parent, in the heat of the moment, the kid I have, I misjudge things and I did things in the wrong way. And I forget that we can take justice in our hand. Problem there, I used to be a high school teacher. And I don't know how a person like me educated did go to have a college degree that miss judge things, how we did things like that. I sit here, it's almost like a year since I've been in jail at the prison. And I keep thinking, why I decided to take justice into my hand? Why I, all of there is judge, God, the judgment day, and there is no system on earth. We can't be like animals, like the wood, the strong one, eat the weak one, and do whatever we want. We leave it to the we leave it to the justice system. That's when they decide. So I apologize. I'm really sincerely like from my side. And the best apology is to change our behavior. How the way it thinks about things. How we did look about things. And I I wish I can take time back again. I wish I can go back. I wish I won't did what happened there. Look what happened. I'm here. My wife in prison. My daughter in with her principal of South Bryan School. I lost everything. Was it worth it? No. Why? It hurt me too much. I am a guy with no previous any criminal history. Always straight. I have no whatsoever criminal history in my record. I never drink. I never smoke. 
I never did the drugs in my life. When I stop on the stop sign in the street, I count one, two, three, four, five. So I want to break the law. I know it's supposed to be five seconds. Why I misjudged that? Where's my brain? All is the same, maybe because I am a dad. But that's, that's not an excuse. That's a very stupid excuse. I am sorry about that. And as I told you, I never had any criminal history, any bad behavior. And if you guys get a second, I wanted to show you here is a, here is a from Iowa Department of Human HPS about me. I don't know if you can see it on the law. Okay. Yep, and it's the date of it is on April. Here the date here. It's mm -hmm. on the April of this. And what is that for? It's for my daughter. I have my daughter. She is living with her principal of high school. They okay. talk up, they talk up, talk about me and my wife. This is a government report, and they say there is no drugs, no alcohol, no whatsoever, no abuse, no violence in the Eunice family. We have no history of anything. I never smoked in my life. I never tried drugs. I never did anything wrong. I did this mistake at the heat of the moment, and this is a report from them. They prove all of that. I never did anything. Right. And here they say, if you let me just read so quick. There is no any kind of violence here. And here they say there is no include alcohol or legal drugs here in my country. I appreciate that. We'll take that into consideration. Thank you. And they say here, me and my wife and my family have very strong bound together and very hygienic relations together, so we don't have an issue. This is from them. This is on ever like a month from today. Okay. Why I did what I did? He to the never thinking, never thinking. I wish I can take time back again. So let me ask you a question. So yes, now, knowing what you know now, and you feel like you made a bad decision then. What would you do differently if you had the same information with your son, everything? What would you do right now if you had the opportunity? With no brain, with no thinking, I would take him back to the court and make it, make the judge decide about what he decide. I won't judge anything no more because there is a judge. That's what that's there is a law. We have to follow the law. We can't make our own law. Okay, my next question for you is you have a job waiting for you at Hy-Vee? Yes, sir. I work Hy-Vee Distribution Center in Cherokee, Iowa since 2010. Okay. I got the employee of the year. I have my picture on the on wall of fame in West Des Moines. I got employee of the month, the quarter, the week, 54 times. Okay. I appreciate that. So you still have opportunity there? Yes, sir. If they told me I have no issue to come back there again. I've been the trainer of the trainer there. And before I was a high school chemistry teacher. Awesome. Thank you. You know, I have no other questions for you. I might have one later, but thank you for your time, sir. I appreciate that. I'm going to pass I it to you. Appreciate your time, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Susie, if you have any. Thank you, Jesse. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Mr. Eunice. How are you? Good morning. Thanks a lot. I'm very nervous, to be honest with you. I'm... That's normal. So you talked about that as a parent, you misjudged the situation. Yes, ma'am. Can you talk to us about what was going through your mind the day that you committed the crime? When he, when I committed the crime or he did commit the crime. When you committed your crime. Yes. What happened there that's uh, too much pressure, like DNA came back after after a year, after 11 months. And they say there is no DNA match on him, on her, on anything. The kid, since first day he came to the house, he said, I didn't do it. We came him, tell him, hey, we sent you to one of the highest college as a, to be a doctor. I didn't, I saw a guy. Family came from overseas. The tribe, my mother-in-law, make over pressure. Talk to the lawyer, he said, okay. We take him to the court and I think they offer him two and a half years instead of 50 years, or they will box them on the top of each other and it will be 50 years. 
My mother-in-law said, no, it's the only boy you have. What do what you think? I'm taking the responsibility and taking him back. I don't know how I've been led. It's like a trap. Pressure from family overseas to the kid. Pressure from my emotions as a dad. You understand. The kid, all of my hope. I left my job working for the government as a teacher to be working to come back here to the United States to do that so they get higher kind of education. It's wrong, completely wrong. And I, again, I will tell you, I wish I can take that time back again. I wish I can reverse things back again. Every night I'm dreaming about that. I have that machine can take the time back again. So I will stop there on the 6th of May, on the 6th of May. And I would say, no, no. You have a court after three weeks, you go to court. You don't do nothing. I believe you don't do nothing. I will be by your side, Dad. Don't run away. If you face a trouble, if you face a problem, the worst thing to do to run away, just face it. Face your fear, but that's why you didn't do anything. Tell them I didn't do anything. Stand in front of the judge. There is no camera. There is no eyewitness. Your word against her word. You didn't do it. God will be with you. And the evidence. Why you just? Why I just did that? Okay. Stupid. Thank you for sharing. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's, it's just a stupid. I don't know. I don't know. It just. I wish, as I told you, I wish I did not do that. I heard that. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for answering my question. I don't have anything else. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Susie. Go ahead, Meredith, if you have any. Um, I just have a couple of questions. Do you know where your son is now? I think he's I think he's in uh, I think he's in uh, Jordan. And the wars, what his mom don't know that he ran away from here. He ran from the small fire to the biggest fire. So he did go to the court there. Even if they don't bring him here, he will go to the court there. And you know how a third world country jail will be, prison will be. I wish he came here. I wish he came here. I don't know how to apologize for him now about what, what, what I did for him. Why I let him go? I wish I can take him back. The heat and the pain inside myself, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Why I did that for my family. Do you have family in Jordan still? I have I have a brother. He's a doctor. I have three sisters. They are living there. And I have another brother. He passed away while I am here. I'm, I didn't attend to his funeral. He used to be a lawyer. Okay. Have they had any contact with your son? I have no idea. No. I'm here from over. I'm here from over more than a year and I never contact with nobody. You can see from my phone calls, I never call nobody. I, I have no idea about what's going on there. I have no contact with nobody. Okay, that's fair. Um, do you have any plans to try to contact your son or try to contact your family? What my plan now, my plan now, all I'm thinking about I wanted to get out and save what I can save. My house, my daughter, she's with her principal of South O'Brien School. My wife, I don't know how our relation will be together. Get back to my job, to contact with my son. He's my son. I would be lie, lie to you if anyone can say that he would want to step up. Not in the future. I'm very, not in the future I cannot see now. Not in the future I cannot see now. And I don't think I cannot contact them. I don't know where he is at exactly for sure. I do have no clue, no information about him since the 6th of May, 9th of May of last year, the day I've been arrested. So it's like more than a year. I have no idea. I have no idea even whom to ask or what to do when I get out. Or I'm thinking about now to get out 
to start working, to pay my bills, to build my life back again. Your son, how old was he when he came to the U.S.? When he came to the United States or already been arrested? I'm sorry, ma'am. When he when came, came to the U.S.? He was 12. Okay. And he was one of the most highest kids in his ACT in Iowa. And he got a lot of free rides to free medical school, University of Iowa. Like that's, that's what I'm talking about, the heat of the moment. When the kid, the principal of South Ukraine School, where is my daughter now? She told me, I can't believe, no one in the community believe what's going on. How a kid like that turned to be this way? I told her, I have no idea. I have no idea. Thank you. All right. Have you had any um, any contact with your daughter since you've been in prison? Yes, ma'am. I always contact with her on a weekly basis. I call her, find out how is her school doing, uh, how is life going with her, ask her to go check on the house, check water, check the electric, the heat, stuff like that. Is she in her senior year now? Yes. I think those were all the questions that I had for you. Thank you. Thank you, Meredith. Um, Susie, did you have any follow up before I go on? I do not. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Jonas, uh, is there anything that you would like the board to know before we go into deliberation or anything that you prepared? No, I would leave. I would leave everything for you guys. I would leave everything for you guys. And I'm sorry for everything. I have nothing else to say. All right. Thank you for your thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. At this time, sir, we're going to go into deliberation. Uh, that means we're going to talk about what we're going to do. Um, you're just to sit back and listen, not participate. When we're completed with this, I will come back to you, tell you what our decision is, and explain our decision. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Colleagues, thoughts? Meredith? Sure. I can start. Um... So I'm looking back, let me just pull up my tab real quick so I can be accurate. So it looks like at the beginning of the month, we did um, parole his wife um, and she is out. She's got a 20B on her parole in their home, which is what I was looking at. Um, you know, obviously I'm not condoning any of the choices that, that were made here um or him you know attempting to flee on his own i am looking at these pearls matching i'm looking at a history of you know no other criminal charges um for mr Eunice here um i'm looking at you know if he does have contact with his son in the future that's going to be a way to track him down so um and there, there is an extradition treaty with Jordan. I'm not sure that they actually follow it completely, but it's there and signed. Um, I think that I would be willing to give this a shot because his wife is out and this is the same crime. Um, I'd be looking at a parole with that no early discharge like we had. Um, and then it looks like his counselor is recommending cognitive treatment. And I think that that would be um, helpful here as well. Thank you. Susie? Uh, yeah, I'm going to agree with the department's recommendation. I'm looking at his TDD date, and I'm just thinking in consideration of the crime that's been committed, I'd like to see uh, him on some street supervision um, and in constant contact with a parole officer so we can ensure that he serves out the sentence and doesn't, you know, that he stays where he's supposed to be as well, I guess is how I would say that. So I would agree with the PGD3, the cognitive, and absolutely the 20B. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I too am in agreement with the DOC recommendation and the same codes. Um, for the mere fact, he, there is no criminal history, there's no drug use, there's no alcohol use, there's no red flags that would, you know, flare up in my eyes at this point. So I am also in agreement. So Mr. Uh, Yunus, you heard us deliberate for our reasons we are going to grant you parole today um we put a couple conditions on there 
Uh, it's a PGD, three million, you're paroling to your home. With the 20 B million, you're going to go to your discharge date. You will not be done until your discharge date, okay? Um, the 40 A is a treatment. We'd like to get you into some kind of cognitive, which your PO will exp explain to you better what he wants you to get in. And uh, other than that, I wish you well. I hope you learn from your mistakes. Hope to never see you again in the positive manner. And you never, I'm sorry, you will never see me in my life. Like, I'm a guy, I did what I did. And thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, that'll, that'll um, terminate this interview. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a wonderful day. Have a good day. You as well. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Why don't we um, take a break and meet up on case reviews at 11? 11, okay. All right. Thanks, Thanks. Kyle. Thank you all. Have a great day. Yeah, you you too. too. And he's granted parole. He was only, he only pled guilty November 21st, 2023. So about a year and a half into his sentence. I don't know how you feel about that. We've got some unpacking to do. Thank you, Richard, for finding the Iowa hearings, for doing all the research. It's been, I mean, I know that we put up a poll the other day. What hearings do you want to see? I saw a lot come in. There's a lot that we want to do. I would love to do Florida. I would love to do New York. I would love to do the many different states that are listed there. We're going to bring to you the states that we can find. If we don't bring you the, the other states requested, it's because we couldn't gain access, but we do have more coming. This case is pretty, you know, incredible in the sense of all the different moving parts of what happened. I mean, let's first give recognition to the survivor who came in with the mic drop. Now, it's not typical of Iowa to have the survivor speak first, but she specifically requested that she did not want to speak in the presence of 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 uh, Alfred Ali Muhammad Yunus. So. Um, that's why they did it this way. I saw a couple other hearings that were really engaging hearings, but there was a problem with the recording software and I can't show it to you. I'm very upset about that because they were quite remarkable hearings as well, but we will be bringing more to you in the future. Let's first jump into, well, before we do that, I, this should have been prevented. Of course, he actually has, and we'll read through it. Um, his, the son had, uh, a, was accused of sexual assault on the college campus, was accused multiple times of stalking. I mean, he had a, he might've been an honor roll student, um, on, uh, uh, on his way to becoming a doctor, but there were red flags everywhere. So let's just jump into some newsreels. I like showing that. Thank you, Richard, again found a Johnson County woman guilty of helping her son flee the country in order to avoid being prosecuted. Allie Yaunas is accused of strangling a woman on the University of Iowa campus till she lost consciousness, then stole her $20,000 earrings. This happened in April of last year. Yaunas later escaped house arrest and flew to the country of Jordan. His mother, Lima Yaunas, is accused of helping her son escape, and a jury convicted her with aiding and abetting escape from custody after helping helping mislead police about where her son was. Yaunas and her husband, Alfred, sold their vehicle, rented a van, and took their son to the Chicago airport so he could leave the country. The couple also turned off their cell phones so they couldn't be tracked. She faces up to five years in prison and will be sentenced next month. Meanwhile, her husband, uh, Yaunas's father, Alfred, is also charged. He was taken into custody while trying to board a flight to Jordan in Omaha earlier this year. He is charged with escape. He has not yet entered a place. So isn't that interesting additional context? They let him out on parole when he tried to escape. They arrested him boarding a plane to Jordan. Now, when I first saw this case without having any of the unpacking, my initial thought was, man, I mean, God forbid, poo, 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 all those, that stuff. If my son had came in and said, I, I didn't do anything. I'm innocent. I'm being accused of something I didn't do. Help me. You know, first they got him for robbery and then they upped his charges for attempted homicide. My first thought was, oh my God, I, yeah, I'd, I'd probably run away to my, I'd, I'd save him. I would believe him. I would do everything to protect him. But the way that this case unfolded is that 
it wasn't an impulse decision to help him escape. It wasn't like a, they didn't have time to think about it. He was, he was first charged with the robbery. Then they upped it to the homicide, but he was on house arrest. He was on house arrest for a long period of time before they orchestrated this escape. So they had time to think about it. They had attorneys. They understood Jordan's extradition treaty. They understood the risks that they were in. They were able to think about it. They had information about the case, how strong the case was, and they made a very deliberate decision to break all of the laws. So when you have that information, it makes uh, his entire statement, in my opinion, disingenuous. When I first heard it, I just felt like I could relate to him. I felt bad for him even. I didn't. But when you have all that info, it changes things. We don't have a lot of time because of all the different hearings that we're doing today. So I'm doing kind of like a scale down unpacking. Normally, I could spend half an hour doing this. Um, but I'll put the links in the description. And thank you again, Richard. So uh, here's <laughs> here's the breakdown of how his parents' involvement. So um these are the actual video, the, the pictures of him when he first attacked the woman, choked her and, and stole her jewelry. And what an idiot to not know that there are cameras everywhere in college campuses. I mean, just not a very bright guy, as you can tell. But, well, maybe I should say he is smart. He was becoming a doctor, but just not very street smart or just couldn't control his impulsions. Um, and we'll get into that too. Well, actually, before I do um, talk about impulsions, his roommate, um, because I don't think I'm going to read all those details for you. So the, the, you know, I have to keep myself. Let me first read to you about how his parents' involvement, and then I'll break down um, for you about all those other assault charges. So um, in his absence, uh, da, 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 da. so a former University of Iowa student, Al Yunus, is still on the run after fleeing the United States to avoid criminal charges for attempted homicide and first degree robbery. In his absence, his parents um, are accused of, uh, are being charged with assisting his escape. Now, he was accused um, of tackling the woman in April, 2022, choking her to unconsciousness and stealing her earrings valued at $20,000. He was charged with attempted first degree robbery and first degree theft. But in June, 2022, the judge, um, Um, uh, sorry, he was charged with uh, uh, attempted uh, homicide and first agreed to set that, right? Now, in June 2022, the judge um, reduces bail from 350 to 125 um, and ordered him to be released with an ankle monitor under house arrest. Now, here's what's, what's interesting is that... Um, they get into it later on, but the, 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 he, he, they only decided to escape after the plea deal came to the table. So the plea deal that the prosecutor was offering was 35 years. So they said, if you go to trial, you'll be 50 years in prison, or we'll give you a plea for 35. And as soon as that happened, they said, we're running. So they they sold their family car for twenty thousand um, dollars. They rented a minivan. They they took their 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 also their daughter's younger sister um, to the airport to say goodbye to him. Right, and he flew to Jordan. Um, now he did surrender his passport initially to the judge, but he had a Jordanian passport, which somehow the courts overlooked that. So he had a passport. Then they, they arrested the parents um, and they arrested the father when he was trying to fly on a flight to Jordan as well. <laughs> so he was trying to escape to Jordan. This is not like you know the way that he kind of made it seem in this parole hearing where, ah, you know, I just it was a, an oversight. No, they had plenty of time to think about it. This was a deliberate, conscious decision to escape. Um, they He turned off his cell phone. She left her phone at the, the house. They sold a car. They rented a car. They did, And they did all of this after they heard about the plea deal. So take that for what you will. 
Um, okay, U.S. student accused of attempted homicide robbery in multiple EFT reports made before arrest. So he was reported four times to the University of Iowa police for stalking and harassment between 2021 and 2022 before his April arrest. So he was an escalating, I guess, maybe serial killer in the making. I don't know. Um, but we'll we'll get into how he thinks what he told his roommate. His roommate filed a report as well, and his roommate filed a report after he told his roommate that he thought that all women were whores and that they were um, just objects to be used. And uh, and then he he uh, grabbed his roommate and made him move a refrigerator when his roommate was walking out of the room and said, "I'll do it later." And that's when he filed a report. So so you should know this is how he felt about woman, uh, allegedly, I guess. I don't know. Um, according to the UI police uh, documents, 18-year-old Ali was accused of stalking and sexual assault, sexual harassment on four separate occasions, all of which occurred at the residence hall in the incident report on January 22nd. Now, he was arrested on April 26th after reportedly strangling a woman that fell unconscious, and if she's, he stole her $20,000 earrings. Now, here's the first report of sexual assault. Take it for how you will. I know that some of you may feel different about this particular charge, but you'll see why nothing happened after this report. So one female student at the UI report um, reported at the UI police department on August 15, 2021 for allegedly being sexually assaulted um, um, in his dorm room. The DI granted the student anonymity. anonymity. Uh, the student who lived in Slater Residence Hall, along with Eunice, approached her at night while she was doing laundry and asked her numerous times to go up to his room with him. She initially declined, but said that he wouldn't take no for an answer. After multiple requests, she finally agreed to go with him to his room. Um, the student said everything began consensually with the two of them briefly kissing. So it started consensually to... She said that then he tried to escalate things. It got to the point where he kept pressuring me to have sex with him. I didn't want to. I told him no over and over again until I just couldn't say no anymore, she said. The student said she finally agreed to have sex with him. Afterward, she went back to her room and told the story to her roommate. I tell her what happened, and she's like, that doesn't sound consensual at all. And I was like, yeah, you're right. That 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 doesn't. So she went and told the RA, who told the hall coordinator, and then the hall coordinator called the cops. Then what ended up happening is that the student chose not to pursue a police investigation against him. So you can't blame the cops. I don't think you can blame the system. They seem to actually do everything that they're supposed to do. And how you feel about this case that's i'm sure we'll have strong opinions on both sides i'm not going to step in in that um now the the bottom line is is that he had an escalating and he had a lot of as you can see different things that's going on then there are reports of stalking and harassment which kept which was reported to the college campus one of the harassments actually the college campus found favor in his side of the story not hers um which that's kind of scary i guess because i mean you must if you open up his record and he has all of these kind of strikes against him you, you at some point you might say wait wait a minute um you have the story with his roommate so here's the roommate where it says he said he he knew living with him was go, was not going to work out after he referred to all women as whores and he had more empathy for animals than women that was his full quote then he talks about the incident of how he said that he grabbed me on my back and my shoulders and dragged me back to the room to move the refrigerator this was reported also to the whole coordinator whole coordinator made the status report but nothing happened and i can understand why nothing happened that kind of report. Hey, move my fridge, you know. But um, it, this goes into further how one of the one of the victims, the stalking victims, was really afraid, and she actually changed dorm rooms and wouldn't go to that side of the college campus. So she was finally relieved to hear that he was locked up, locked up. 
<laughs> and now escape. But it, people were scared of him. They were scared of him. And as you can see, rightfully so. I am forever grateful and indebted to all of these people for my care. Two, the long-term effects of strangulation and the lack of oxygen to the brain have the potential to have catastrophic effects on my cognitive functions as I age. This is an unknown that I must live with and worries me tremendously and is of great concern to my family as well. I believe the complicit nature of Mr. Jonas's actions in order to facilitate his son's fleeing and his inability to take responsibility for his actions indicate that he will continue to disregard the law or the terms of parole set by the board. Mr. Jonas is a danger and should continue to serve out his full sentence. I ask that the parole board deny Mr. Jonas's request for early release from his prison term. Um, again, I think that um, he has shown disregard for rules, not just in my case, but throughout his lifetime. I don't see that changing. I think extra time or the full serves time served i would hope would at least make an impression that maybe the rules do apply to him and his family